Hello and welcome to a new video for GCSE Citizenship Studies. This is for the AQA spec, but it doesn't really matter. Um, this video is on the role of local government. Exciting, I know. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to say is that this is probably the least interesting of my probably very uninteresting videos. However, it covers um, local government and hopefully it might give you a bit of insight into what local government does. Um, the first thing to say about it is that local government does the sort of things that we generally take for granted, so probably why it's so uninteresting um, to begin with. Okay, um, the first thing basically to say is that local government is also known as local authorities. You see the kind of like two uh, used and they're kind of interchangeable, so local government, local authorities. And that can be quite confusing because it covers quite a few institutions. For example, I live in Warwickshire, so Warwickshire is my county council, um, but you can also get district councils, city and borough councils. There are also things like unitary authorities, London borough councils, metropolitan boroughs, etc. Basically, they kind of do the same thing. They make um, decisions at a local level that are appropriate for a local area. So uh, to cite an example that, um, that's happening near where I live is that um, there are plans to build a car battery gigafactory. Basically, um, the local authority want to build a huge, huge factory on a site which is currently uh, an airport and that needs to get permission from various local organisations such as Coventry City Council and also Warwickshire County Council because not only will it affect Coventry because that's where they're planning to build it but it'll also involve major investment in things like roads etc. So to keep it simple, you all will basically live in a local area where you'll want services such as bin collections. Now, local authorities provide those services, and it also means that they can reflect um, the wishes of the people who live in that area. For example, bin collections are used by everyone, so all local authorities provide bin collections, but they might not provide the same sort of uh, facilities and resources in an area where there are lots of OAPs. So it's unlikely um, where there are loads of old age pensioners that you're going to build a skate park. Now that's tough for the young people who live in the area because they might want that, but you might see more facilities for old age pensioners than young people. Conversely, in an area where there are lots of young people, you'll see facilities uh, for them. So it's a bit of a balancing act. Um, and of course, when it comes to providing these facilities, you've also got to take into account how expensive they are, um, you know, the age of the population, um, etc. Uh, the problem, of course, with this is that you you feel that and people often feel that the money could be spent in one area in better ways than uh, some people do spend it. For example, you know, why is it that one area has a youth club and other areas don't? So one of the questions that arises from this is, well, where does the money come from? Where does the money come from to pay for these services? Uh, basically, local authorities or local government have two major, two major sources of money, council tax and business rates. Business rates are basically easier to understand. Essentially, if you own a business, the council will charge you an amount depending on how much your business premises could be rented for. So uh, a shop on a busy high street could be charged far more business rates than the same size shop on a housing estate, which is why very often you see um, local high streets um, with empty shops because, you know, they're an expensive thing to run. Now, council tax is a bit more difficult to understand, but basically each house in England is put into a band depending on how much it is worth. Um, now, the more expensive the house, the bigger the council tax bill is. Now, the amount that these houses were valued at um, took place quite some time ago when council tax was first created, way back in 1991. So if you live uh, in a house which has only just been built in a really kind of weird and strange way. They have to kind of 
think about what it would have been worth in 1991 so that it goes in the correct band. The other thing about council tax is that it varies where you live. So, for example, a £30 million house in London, in Kensington and Chelsea, will pay less um, council tax than a one-bedroom flat in Blackpool, strangely enough. The last thing I'm going to mention in this video is the role of local councillors. Um, basically, local authorities employ over a million people in England. So they, they're the people who work in council offices, who deal with the admin, stuff like that. However, local priorities are decided by people called local councillors. These are elected members of the public who want to represent their local area. They can be independent, so you can stand to be a local councillor just because you happen to live in the local area and want to uh, represent that area. But quite a lot of them are representative of political parties. Now, there is a problem with this because local elections often have a low voter turnout, um, mainly because people don't really see sort of, you know, this local government as, as being a particular priority. They are interested in what happens at a national level in terms of politics. Uh, and because of this, there is occasionally problems in recruiting people to represent their local communities. OK. I hope that this um, short video has given you a little bit of a flavour of what local councils and councillors do, um, where local government get its funds from, etc.